So I got a questionnaire sent back the other day, and uh, I'll read it to you. It's a little bit long, and uh, the, the wording is a little bit weird, but um, I, I think it, it's a good lesson that is held here. So it says, Hey, coach, I have a lot of goals, and I cannot prioritize. I looked at my soul, but I couldn't compromise. I know you'll understand, C, so please write a plan for me. My goals are below, just so you know. I want to get bigger and thicker. I want to get leaner and meaner. I want to build muscle, but don't worry, I'm willing to hustle. I want to run a marathon, look good in a thong, strong like the Parthenon, get a bigger python, bigger arms without sarms. I want a six pack and a nice rack, and I know my goals are whack, but I'm not lacking in tracking macros, but I'm prone to snacking on Fritos and nachos. I love bro code, please keep the reps low because I'm lazy, and in fact I won't pay you, you should pay me. I'll need a contract, if not a treaty, monthly installments should do nicely. Also, CrossFit intrigues me, please bear with me, try to understand that my demands are reasonable, I'm talking world records, they should be achievable. I want a bigger snatch, wait, scratch that, it's all about the deadlift, but my form ain't the norm, please send me a checklist. I want to squat like a juggernaut, if not bench press a lot on the bench press, out press the rest to impress the thoughts and the wenches. In terms of my physique, I need it complete. A pair of brute glutes like a corgi's kids, or porky pig, yes I need that peach so please advise. I want thighs wider than the sunrise, calves, or I must have two. Coach, I'm so glad I contacted you. Also, just so you know, I'm a CEO, in it to win it 5 minutes a day plan if that's okay. Furthermore, sorry to be a bore, but I'm allergic to protein, it makes my spleen scream like kids for ice cream. What a weird email. Strange. So I do see this a lot, people email me and they have a million goals, and most of these goals are going to be conflicting. And I'll talk about that a little bit later, but they say, oh I want to put 10 kilos on my bench and 30 kilos on my squat and I also want a bigger deadlift and I want to also run a marathon next year plus I want to do a water fast every week I need to do intermittent fasting also I'm allergic to protein my parents only give me 16 grams of protein per day and I want to do gymnastics and calisthenics and run a marathon and 120 miles per week and I'm on the water polo team also, I'm stressed, and then I have only 10 minutes per day to train, and I need to get a six-pack because I saw that in a magazine. It's important, and I only get four hours of sleep per night, and I also want bigger legs and bigger arms, and also I need a girlfriend, so coach, can you help me with that? What is very, very important to realize, and what all great athletes realize pretty quickly, is that you have a finite amount of adaptation energy. You cannot adapt to everything that you want to adapt to. It is simply not possible. So it makes a lot more sense to only choose a few goals that overlap and try to do those. Try to focus on just a few at a time, not everything at once. I'm not saying that you can't get better at a 5K and a squat at the same time. You absolutely can. However, it'll be more difficult, it'll be slower, You'll be more prone to injury if you don't set things up in a very intelligent way. You have to be very mindful of recovery, of your sleep, of your nutrition, and everything just gets a lot more difficult in terms of your training, in terms of your programming, in terms of how attentive you need to be to your body and to your progress. Again, I'm not saying you can't make progress for multiple goals at the same time. You can, but it will almost always be slower, and it'll usually be much slower. So if you really want to be a marathoner, be a marathoner. If you want to squat big, squat big. Just choose one to three goals at one time and try to make sure that those goals overlap pretty well. So if you want to get bigger legs and a bigger squat, those are very, very overlapping goals and it can work really, really, really well. However, if you want to get bigger legs while training to get a faster marathon, well, um, good luck, because that's going to be almost impossible. If you look at most top marathoners, they don't have the thickest thighs out there. And this takes a more mature outlook. You need to realize that you probably can't do everything, and you need to choose a specific goal for a specific time period. If I'm running, I'm focused on running. If I'm in the gym, I don't run at all. I haven't ran more than about 100 meters at a time in two or three months, simply because, ah, notification, simply because 
It's not a goal of mine. Right now, my goal is to get bigger and get stronger. Endurance training is going to conflict with that simply because your body is trying to optimize survival. It's interested in two things, survival and mating, usually in that order. If you're drunk, the order is sometimes reversed. But generally speaking, survival comes first. So how does your body try to optimize survival? Well, one thing it does is it has two different pathways. One is going to be big and strong. The other one is going to be lean and enduring. So if you look at most marathoners, they are skinny. They are small. They have a lot of endurance. And that is their, I don't want to say body type, but that's what they look like as a result of their training. If you look at most power lifters, bodybuilders, they look, even sprinters, they look very, very different. And that is because they train differently. This is a direct result of their training. It is a direct result of their body trying to optimize survival. It is a self-defense mechanism. Even muscle, building muscle, is a self-defense mechanism. So something called mTOR is actually triggered. So when you eat big, when you train heavy, so if you eat protein, you eat carbs, you do a bench press really, really heavy, you trigger this enzyme. It's not a hormone, it's actually just an enzyme, which is called mTOR. And so this is actually what helps build muscle. Without mTOR, you ain't gonna build muscle, okay? The opposite of mTOR is gonna be called AMPK. And so it's not exactly the opposite, it's sort of an oversimplification, but I think it's a good way to think. If you are doing endurance training, if you are fasting, this is going to trigger AMPK. And actually, it does have implications for longevity. So if you want to live a long time, triggering AMPK makes a lot of sense. If you want to be big and strong, triggering mTOR makes a lot of sense. So do you want to have a lot of endurance? Do you want to live a long time? Do you want to be thin, skinny, lithe, flexible, that body type, etc.? Go for AMPK. If you want to be big, strong, have a lot of body mass, eat a lot of protein, eat a lot of carbs, train heavy, and trigger mTOR. Again, they aren't complete opposites, but they are quite opposite in a lot of different cases. And this is part of the reason why it is difficult to achieve multiple goals at the same time. If you're doing a lot of endurance training, it's actually going to conflict with putting on muscle. And I've noticed this. If I do too much endurance training, I will lose strength and I will definitely lose muscle. So keep in mind that if you're doing a lot of cardio, especially if you're natural, you will almost certainly lose strength and muscle. At best, you're probably going to maintain. So if you do a lot of cardio, keep in mind that you'll get better at cardio, but you might get worse at lifting weights. So when you're selecting your goals, try to categorize them into bigger and stronger and leaner and more endurance, because those two things are going to be quite different in terms of your training, in terms of your diet, in terms of your lifestyle, in terms of your choices. And if you choose, you know, 10 goals, if they're all on one side, that is actually doable. But if you choose 10 goals, and half of them are more mTOR, and half of them are more AMPK, well, good luck, okay? It's probably not going to end very well, especially once you get past a certain point. If you want to increase your squat from, you know, 50 kilos to 60 kilos while running a lot, that should absolutely be doable. But if you want to increase your squat from 140 kilos to 160 kilos, that's probably going to require a more specialized approach. So the closer you are to your genetic potential, the more difficult and the more specialized your approach is going to need to be. So if you want to squat 200 kilos and your genetic potential is 210 kilos, that is going to require a long time and a lot of specialization. All right, that is all for today. Sorry for the absolutely terrible intro. I felt like I had to do something different. Mix it up a little bit. Stay safe wherever you are. Have a good day. And I will see you next time. Peace.